Well, good morning, y'all. We're out here, um, out here on the property just exploring. The puppy is uh, taking it all in like a sponge. She watches the older dogs very closely. She kind of emulates what they do. Look at her following Dolce. So I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, well, it's kind of common sense, but you know, just like the, the hazards, the, the precautions um, with, with a puppy. Kind of Corso, just like any other puppy, you know, they're going to want to put everything in their mouth to sample everything. That's, that's how they're taken in the world around them. They're experiencing everything through uh, sight and sound and smell and also oh look at that structure goodness gosh she is so nice well yeah so anyways um out here where i live in in uh the texas hill country uh, there's there are uh plants that are kind of unique to this area that are toxic but i would just recommend wherever you are if you do have a, a puppy you know just to um Maybe get the plant app. There's an app that, that you can get on your phone. And uh, that will identify plants. And that's how I discovered some of the ones that are growing in my yard that are toxic. Like there was a real pretty purple one. It's called uh, Nightshade. And, and it's highly toxic. Like even the little the leaf. If she puts it in her mouth and swallows it. It's highly toxic to the liver. But, um, so I, so I got all those up. I tried to identify everything, like, like this one is Velvet Leaf Senna. Oh, it's gorgeous. It has a pretty yellow flower in August, October, September, I mean. Anyways, um, that one is okay for dogs, but there's one that's kind of similar to it that's highly toxic. Um, and then all the milkweed, the butterfly bushes and all that, those are all toxic. They have alkaloids in them. But, so the plants is one thing. If you'll notice, she's teething. She wants to chew on everything. Uh, uh, uh. No, no, baby. But she will also, like, come chew on, um, on a bark, which is good. Come here, baby. So I'll let her chew on that. But not the chairs. <laughs> no, 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 baby girl. Um, I just kind of have to redirect her. If she's chewing something that you don't want her to chew on, it, it helps to have something to replace that handy. So now she's going to chew on that. Good girl. So she can kind of start to discern the difference between furniture and sticks. <laughs> but, um... But yeah, it helps to have like another chew toy or something that you can just quickly put in their mouth to replace whatever it is you don't want them chewing on. She did chew on, or not she, but Ozzy chewed on a really nice um, coffee table I had in my other house when I had Ozzy as a puppy. It was like a, a gorgeous one from Pier 1, real expensive. And... He chewed the legs of it and the corners because it was wooden. I had to call that one a field loss. Field loss, you know. But, um, but anyway, um, so I replaced it with a, uh, a, a nice coffee table that has metal legs. And she actually tried to chew on them. <laughs> I said, yep, can't get that one. But... Um, so okay so so on the same uh, topic of um toxic so anything in the lily family is toxic here in texas we have uh native esperanza we have uh lantana those are all toxic oh i gotta tell you this story real quick when ozzy was a puppy that same house that i had well, i was talking about the house i had earlier in san antonio i sold it about a year ago and got this house but in that house when i first moved in it's about four years ago 
there were these two huge, beautiful sago palm trees. If you're not sure what a sago palm is, I mean, if you Google it, you've probably seen one before. It's just, it's called a S-A-G-O, sago palm. Gorgeous. And they're, they're expensive if you buy them mature because they take a long time to mature. But I had two on, two in my backyard. And um, I don't know how I found out, but I found out that they are also highly, highly toxic to dogs. Highly toxic, like any piece of it. It's also, it'll shut down the dog's liver. And, um, and then the more I Googled, I he heard stories of people's dogs dying from that, even adult dogs. But of course, it's it's worse for a puppy. But uh, so I had to immediately, I, I put an ad on Craigslist and said free, you know, free, two sago palms for free if you just, you have to dig them up though. And man, they were a beast to dig up. This guy came and he did it by himself, but it took him like a week. And then um, any part that's left over, like from when he dug it up, like the, the little seeds or anything, I was paranoid that Ozzy would would eat it. Um, he actually put one of them in his mouth and I quickly got it out. So anyway, that's the horror story of the Sago Palm. But um, as the adults, they don't really mess with it, but the, the puppies will definitely try to mess with it. Let's see what else. Uh, yeah, so I just, it, everything, you know. Um, she, she tried to eat a bug yesterday. I don't know if that bug is toxic or not, so I just have to quickly take it out of her mouth. But yeah, I would just say definitely keep your eye on them at all times. Of course, it's like an infant. You, you can't take your eyes off of them. Because it's so so funny. Murphy's Law, it, like, literally, the minute you take your eyes off of them, they're, they're putting something in their mouth that they're not supposed to. And for her, I gotta keep my eyes glued to her because I gotta watch if she's gonna try and um, scratch her ears. She occasionally does because they're, they're so far in the healing process that they're scabbing over and, and that sometimes is itchy. So I don't keep the collar on her right now because she's already like 90% healed, but... But the minute my eyes are off of her, I see her scratching. <laughs> so it's like they know. It's like they have this radar. When they know your eyes left them, then they quickly do what they're not supposed to. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Um, and then also, um, this is just kind of basic puppy information. Is a uh, and dog information is, is uh, just to know what they're not supposed to have to eat. You know, like grapes, like um, chocolate, of course, onion. Ooh, baby. Garlic. Xylitol. Xylitol is, you know, it's that s artificial sweetener that's in uh, a lot of things. Like, it, it's in yogurt, it's in pretty much anything has xylitol that is advertised as like low low sugar or no sugar gum chewing gum so um if you give your dog like yogurt or anything like that just make sure that it doesn't have xylitol in it it's deadly to dogs eucalyptus is another one like um some people have like eucalyptus um candles or anything like that that's toxic it'll make your dog sick or like eucalyptus uh, hand cream, anything like that. Uh, so there's a long list, but you can uh, you can just do a quick Google search, even you know, for foods that are toxic to dogs. But uh, I, I try not to give any kind of table food, aside from like yogurt. Um, I gave her like a tiny little dollop of yogurt to get to get the antibiotic pill down her, but. Other than that, you know, they can have certain vegetables, which is good for them. But right now, I'm just keeping her on a, on a bland diet of uh, good chewing, of um, 
uh, the kibble, the really extremely high quality kibble that I have. It's called Ziwi, Z-I-W-I. It's extremely expensive as well, but I'm just gonna do that at, for the puppy stage. Ah, Z. While she's really relying on optimal nutrition, I'm, I'm gonna keep her on that. And then I supplement with um, shredded chicken, shredded boiled chicken. At night, I, I mix, mix that in with the kibble. Hazi, where's your papa? And then, uh, what else? And then I also am slowly introducing her to raw because I supplement with raw. And uh, so in, in the morning when I give Ozzy his frozen steak, it's a cheap steak, beef shank, I'll give her a small uh, frozen chicken tender. Uh, you know, it's boneless. Although they can have raw bone. You just don't want to give them too much of it. Zinnias, these are volunteer. Ooh, the birds dropped the seed there. Pretty. Get it, baby girl. Oh, look at her eyes. They're gorgeous. Goodness. Her eyes are so gorgeous. But yeah, so anyways, um, we're just... We're just uh, out exploring. And uh, I don't know where Ozzy is. Let's go this way, baby. Let's go this way. But yeah, like I said, on my next videos, after her ears are completely healed, when the bandages are off... <coughs> Uh oh, I'll start doing some training videos. I tried to start training her to lay down. It's a hard one. I, sit, the sit command is the easiest of all. She's already got that down pat, but, but um, yeah, I gotta work on the lay down, the down command. I got her started on that yesterday, but it's, that one takes a little more time. But I'll, I'll videotape how I'm doing it. As um, soon as her bandages come off, so I can uh, really focus on it. Gigi, baby girl. So that'll be in a couple days. Where's that baby girl? Hmm? Where's that baby? Where's that Luchi? Where's that Luchi? <laughs> I'm gonna mark this as a good thing because she's outside. Good girl, go pee pee. Good girl, pee pee. So she's about 90% um, potty trained. And part of it is that um, the doggy door that they go, the dogs go to the bathroom through, you know, they go out the, the big doggy door, it's activated by their collar and um i don't have that collar on her yet although she she will follow them out that door while it's open she'll she'll go out there with them and i have to immediately go out there with her but i i don't have it on her yet because i don't want her going out there in the middle of the night and me not knowing it but as soon as she's old enough, which will probably be in about a month, um, then I think that'll really help with the potty training because she'll be able to go out there even at night on her own. She's pooping. Good girl. So... I'm going to actually take her today, I think, to go get her second parvovirus vaccine. Her second parvo vaccine. I'll feel a lot better when she's got that. So when she's got her parvo vaccine complete, then I'm going to uh, also take her for some socialization out in public, like the Home Depot. So that'll be a good video. I could show y'all how I do it. And, um... She's already got the drive-throughs. Like she knows that people coming 
you know, near the car window, the driver's side, at the drive through she doesn't bark. She, she sees that that's okay. If a dog's not used to that, you know, they'll, like my brother's dog, they live out in the country, and um, he doesn't, he, he cooks for himself. He never goes through drive throughs So <laughs> when I was watching his dog once, um, I went through a drive through and the dog barked his head off out at the, at the drive through attendant. He just wasn't used to it. Come on, baby girl. She's following me. Good girl. Okay. Where's that old chick? Where's that old chick girl? Oh, shoot. I thought that was a mushroom. Yeah, the other thing to be careful for is mushrooms. Oh, my God. Mushrooms are a tough one because... I, th I find it harder to identify which ones are toxic and which ones aren't. And sometimes the toxic and non-toxic ones can look nearly identical. So you really almost have to be an expert in, in mushroom identification. And I haven't found an app yet. If anyone knows of one, please let me know. But I have not found a mushroom identification app. I'm sure there's one out there. There's an app for everything nowadays. But um, yeah, at that same house that I was talking about my other house uh i had mushrooms growing and because i had laid down some mulch and then they started popping up through the mulch whenever it would rain and i was like horrified because i didn't know if they were toxic so i uh quickly picked them all up as soon as i could but i guess when in doubt just take it up and throw it away so the puppy doesn't get to it. Look how beautiful she is. My goodness, man. I am just like... Oh, gosh. I am just so amazed how... What a good uh, structure, she, structure and temperament that she has. Man, I really lucked out. That bre The breeder, if anyone's looking for a puppy, he's still got some available, male and female. Um, it's, uh, Wailani Robles, I'm probably saying his ro name wrong, but it's W-A-I-L-A-N-I, and then last name R-O-B-L-E-S, and if you Google that name and then Connie Corso, he's got a Facebook page, and that's how you could contact him, is through his Facebook, but... Uh, man, he has got some fantastic, fantastic pups right now. And they're about three months old now. But honestly, it's recommended not to crop the ears after three months. Because the cartilage starts to mature at that age. But um, I'm sure if you're a week or two past that, it's it's fine. But... If you are looking for a, a pup and considering one from that litter, then it's probably better to move quicker, um, sooner than later, so you can, if you want the ears cropped. But anyway, sorry, lots of tangents on this video, but uh, I know it's getting kind of long. I'll let y'all go. I'll put a. Oh, look at her. Uh-uh, down. Uh-uh, down. I just got back from. I went to get some breakfast at McDonald's. Good girl. Yeah. Do, oh, also, hey, man, this is this is super important because I know some people whose Cane Corso um, put their paws up on a, on the kitchen table and and will steal food. It's not only as bad manners, but it's dangerous because there could be something like onion or something toxic for them or something hot that they could get burned. So. Um, when the first time I see them doing doing that in the house, it's a swift correction, and none of my corso ever even attempt that anymore. As a puppy, they did, but like the coffee table, even if there's food on there, this puppy will try and get that. I'll quickly knock her down, like not too harsh, you know, but appropriate for her age. I'll just swiftly correct her. 
um, because it's super dangerous. So yeah, even I can have like the tastiest, you know, juicy steak on the coffee table. None of my Corso will will uh, attempt to grab that. So that's, that is, I always forget to mention, that's extremely important. I see people like on the Facebook kind of Corso groups that will post a picture of their Corso with their paws on the kitchen table and they kind of put like a laughing, um, kind of jokingly like, um, oh, at it again. But I, there, there's no joke in that to me. That's extremely serious hazard for your Corso. And uh, and a neighbor of my not neighbor uh some, there's somebody that I know that has a another mastiff breed that is extremely overweight and they joke and say oh he you know he stole my hamburger yesterday or you know I had a pizza and they took it ha ha you know it's so bad but you know that's horrible I think that's horrible it's uh really bad for the dog to to be doing that. Anyway, that's my rant, but just another training, uh, something as far as what to train your Corso for is, is definitely to uh, not grab things from the table, because they're tall enough to do it, they can do it. So anyway, so I'll let y'all go, and uh, we'll talk to you on the next one. Hope y'all having a good day. Lucia! <laughs>